All right, everyone. So welcome back to uh, day two of our social of our search engine optimization class. Here's the documents that I've got for you today. In the same vein as last week, I gave you a Word document that uh, was for you to fill out for your for yourself. Uh, it was the company profile document. Remember that I gave you that so you can fill it out and to start to answer some questions that you might not have thought of before. And uh, these questions will help you in various aspects of your site, specifically your About Us page. And About Us page is an important aspect of a website because it, it, it uh, has uh, this content that is important for the history of your company and for building authority on the search engines and such. So I gave that to you last week and I'm going to give you another such document right now. Uh, so if you, uh, if you go to the desktop, go to Computer, open the computer window, and then go to the um, local disk C drive. Local disk. I'm sorry, not local disk. Uh, sorry, let's go back. The classroom data drive Z, the Z drive, this network drive. So I'm going to go to the network folder. This is where I can pass files to you in class here. So open up that classroom data drive Z. Scroll down past the other instructors folders and you will see campus SEO folder. Open that folder. You'll see last week's File, uh, Campus SEO Zero uh, Company Profile. If you weren't here last time, you can get a copy of that. Uh, take a look at it on your own. Ask me about it during the, the break. But what you want for today is SEO Zero Marketing Strategy and also SEO number two, Word, uh, Webmaster Tools. Copy those to your desktop or flash drive. You can simply drag from that folder to your desktop and you'll get a copy of them. Just copy those two. Don't just double click them because everyone is trying to access that file. If you open that file, you might prevent someone else from accessing it. So copy it to your desktop. Just drag it over. So once you've copied Campos SEO Zero Marketing Strategy, let's take a look at it. So when you copy it over, double click it, it will take a look at it. I'll explain what I've got here for you. This is another one of these documents that you might not have thought of. Uh, this will be helpful. It's, uh, I teach in a variety of my classes. Mostly I teach um, sort of like, um, I might teach like a variety of programming classes, HTML, Android, etc. A lot of coding. And it's not a good idea in, in that type of class or project to dive into writing code without our idea of what we're trying to accomplish. I want to create an Android app, but I'm not just, I'm not just going to get into Eclipse and start writing code. I'm going to get out a plain old piece of paper and sketch my idea out. Everything starts like that. Twitter started like that. We can go look at the original Twitter napkin where they wrote the idea of what Twitter was going to be. It's online. Now I say that for because it just applies to just about everything, even search engine optimization. I'm trying to get found by the search engines. And I can show you a variety of documents for you to look at and checklists to, to follow. But if you don't have a plan overall, that might not get you as far as you, as you need to. Uh, as I've said, what I do in this class, I also do it for real clients. My company and I, pmdinteractive.com, we do this stuff for real clients. This is one of the things we did for a real paying client, which is to figure out, in uh, as specific as possible, but of course it can be further refined as time goes on, a marketing strategy. Uh, because this class is SEO slash SEM, Search Engine Optimization and Search Engine Marketing. So the SEO part will be a little bit later when we set up these webmaster tools. And right now I'm going to talk a bit on SEM, search engine marketing. Uh, what do you do besides what's on your website 
to get traffic to your website, to get noticed by the search engines, to get found. Marketing. It's a, a variation, and there's specific definitions, but it's a variation of advertising. You know, love it or hate it, advertising works. Why do you think Mad Men is one of the most popular shows at the, on TV at the moment? Uh, it's been also marketed in a way like, that. those are some cool people. They lived in a cool time. I want to watch this. Even if you don't like Mad Men, think about all of the other advertising that you come across. The billboards and the, um, the things in your mailbox, your, your email box, uh, someone handing you a leaflet. Uh, I just got a, uh, an email that Fry's is having a sale down the street over here. Fry's is having a sale. No sales tax. Like, I'm going to go to Fry's because I found something that I cared about and I want to take advantage of it. So marketing strategy for your business, your company, your organization, whatever you're doing, is something we need to think about. On our document here, you're just going to fill out your company name. Again, you're not going to turn this in. I'm not going to give you a grade on this. You don't get a grade in this class. You get results, hopefully. You get that your website is found on search results. But you're going to fill in your name of your company, your name, put the date, just so that you have a record of this. And then there's some questions that you want to answer at some point. I'll, I'll, I'll read them here and explain what I'm going for. What do you wish to accomplish? You have a, a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs more members? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence, which will be your website at the minimum and your social media. Uh, in my example here, I use this fictional company, a couple of them, Victor's Bakery and Vic.co. Vic.co wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So whatever comes to your mind as you start to think about why am I online? What am I trying to accomplish? I've had this family business for 10 years and everyone's getting online and I need to too. Yes, but why do you need to get online? Do you need to sell products? Do you need to build awareness for the physical store? Maybe have online promotions? Um, I mentioned here, I want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So how many of you have heard of Instagram before? How many of you have an Instagram account? How many of you post regularly to Instagram? Okay, so Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that is an aspect of social media. That's not something you do on your website. On your website, it's the SEO. On Instagram, Facebook, etc., that's the SEM the search engine marketing. What are you doing outside of your website to bring people to your website? So that's why this class is SEO, SEM, because it's, it's more than just keywords on your website. If you just do that, you're not going to get the, as much uh, traffic and traction as you would if you also incorporate SEM. Question? So it's like Twitter and Instagram, is that going to affect your, your uh, it could. It's not. I wouldn't say it would affect it negatively, but it could affect it positively. If you do have a presence on Twitter, if you're tweeting, if you're Facebooking, if you're G-plusing or whatever the verb is, if you're doing that stuff on social media, that could help you because you're building awareness, you're, you're building authority, it's helping your longevity, you're putting out content, the three pillars, that could help your results. Who is your target audience? It's important to focus on a target audience. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in my product or cause or group, but it but just it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like to know about your product? What are their age ranges, gender, economic group, musical style? In short, who would care about your product? So um, I had um, a meeting a few years ago with someone that wanted to uh, hire my company to do their website and social media. And then, of course, one of the first questions is, okay, who's your demographic? Who are you going for? Uh, and basically, well, everyone. Okay, what's your product? Uh, I, we've got this brand new revolutionary baby, uh, baby crib. So, okay, not everyone would care about that. I don't care about that. I don't have kids. 
So you have to think about everyone is not your target audience. It would be nice that everyone cared about your product and such, but you have to think about who is your target audience. If I am a realtor, people that are going to care about my product, which is buying a house, are the people that are looking to buy or sell a house, not everyone that is happily living in their house. So this is why you have to ask these sorts of things. Do you have an age range? Do you want to target? Think about also, if you don't know the answer, who currently is your demographic, who do you want to target? Well, my products, my jewelry is nice, but I'm not going for the demographic of a, a, you know, a high school mall goers. My jewelry is not for them. My jewelry is for those that can afford $2,000 earrings, and not $25 earrings. So your age ranges, your gender, it's important to think about that too because when we talk about social media, some social media is more effective for some uh, demographics and genders. A uh, very quick tip, if you are going to go toward, for example, a female demographic, Pinterest is one of the best social media, uh, social networks to get into because from what I read, Pinterest is, is, uh, is very popular with women. So think about what your product or brand or organization is, and you might think about which one works best for you. On the opposite side, Google Plus is very good for a male audience, a tech-savvy male audience. And of course, I'll talk more in detail about each network, but for the moment, you have to think about this stuff so that you can apply it. Economic group, musical style. Uh, so my example, the people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy but know what they want. They are people that are in their 30s who are successful, own their own company, and need a website and know the value of web design. Because people um, ascribe a value to physical things. You know, this phone is worth $400 because I know it's got microchips and RAM and all of that stuff. But is a website worth $4,000? Yes or no? Could be. Could be. Yeah. Yes, no. It could be. It could not. It depends what's on the website, what's it about, how complicated is it, what kind of programming is in it. But people right away, in my experience, discount the value of a website because it's not real. It's dots on a screen. It's not a physical object. So how could it possibly cost $500, $2,000, $9,000? So what I'm saying here is, who's my target audience? Okay, successful people that have their own company that know the value of web design. I'm not going to go with the cheapskates. Everyone wants a website, but not everyone understands the value of the website. I have jewelry, and I'm going to sell it for $500 for, for you know, a, a simple ring or whatever. I'm not going to go to the demographic that is interested in a $75 ring. I have a demographic, a target audience. And if I don't have any of this in mind, that's why I give you this to start thinking about it. This is a good one that we ask our, our clients, the next one here. Do you have an aspirational competition? It's good to have role models, both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that? Or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List a company, person, brand, etc. that you would that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? Vic.co feels that XY Designs is, your as is our aspirational competition because they have a large clientele and their designs are unique and modern. So everyone can be a web designer. You take one class and you're a web designer. Or you learn a few YouTube, you watch a few YouTube videos and you're a web designer. So um, our competition here, fictional competition, is this company that um, has a an aesthetic that is unique and modern because you can see a variety of types of websites um, juvenile, uh, classic, uh, modern, um, busy, complicated, minimalistic there's a variety of types of websites and we're trying to go for websites that are unique but modern and uh, you have to think about who is your competition, who do you aspire to be you know, you may not want to admit it to yourself, okay, that my competitor that's open down the street, I hate them, but I kind of like what they did with their, with their logo. You know, you kind of have to sometimes be objective and look at your competition. So when we do this for, for our clients, and one of the recent ones that we did this for, 
Uh, I mentioned it before, I'll show it again at some point, that Mexican food restaurant, Aquí es Texcoco, uh, in Chula Vista, they went, we did this marketing plan back at the end of last year, December 2013 or so, which we've been implementing in steps throughout this year. In the beginning, we asked him, who do you uh, aspire to be? So he's a Mexican food restaurant, and he said, well, I want to be like Phil's Barbecue. So how many of you heard of Phil's Barbecue? It's one of the big names in barbecue in San Diego. A lot of times when you think about barbecue, you think Phil's Barbecue. Now you might say, no, I think this other barbecue. I want Kansas City style or Texas style or whatever. There's, everyone can make their own style of, uh, of barbecue and everyone loves a style. But this client was saying he wants to be like them, because I also say here why, because they've got a line out the door for 40 minutes before you can even walk in. They are, for better or for worse, synonymous with barbecue in San Diego. They've been around a while. They sell their barbecue sauce now at the store. So for some people, like my parents, a measure of success is how do you also appear other ways? Uh, what I mean is, like, if I take a really cool photo, my mom always says, that photo is so good it could be on a Hallmark card. So when people think about where else do you appear, you're successful. So this question here is who do you want to emulate? Who do you want to be like but better? Uh, who's your target? Who's your aspirational competition? They're in competition with you perhaps, but someone as a role model to perhaps learn and do better. Vision statement. On the previous uh, document, there was a mission statement. Mission statement, vision statement are different. Mission statement is basically a mission statement tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company or brand. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. So here, we focus our fictional company perhaps into our target demographic of restaurants. We have seen plenty of bad websites for restaurants, and we want to make good websites for elegant restaurants. So a vision statement is where would I like to go in whatever time horizon you have. Two years, one year, five years, ten years. Where am I going? Where is my company going? Where do I want it to go? Whereas a mission statement is what I'm trying to do now. You might think, well, after I've kind of done well with this concept in my mission, our vision statement is to eventually expand like this. And then we've got the USP, Unique Selling Proposition. What do you provide your customer that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Vic.co is based in San Diego, and many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State University, and UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to San Diego companies. So everyone can be a retailer, everyone can be a web designer, everyone can be anything, just about. How do you make yourself stand out from your composition? What is unique to you? What is your USP? So that it's something you'll have to figure out. What do you provide that others don't? Maybe in your research you see that no one provides a free 30-minute consultation. Everyone is always charging for everything. So my USP will be that we offer a free 45-minute uh, consultation to figure out your needs. So what is unique to you that will sell your product to potential clients. So this is a variation on a document that we do for our clients. I'm giving it to you to, to work with, fill it out at your leisure, think about it. If you'd like me to check it out and give you any opinions on this one or the previous document, feel free to catch me during lab time or send me an email and I'll be happy to. My rates are very affordable. <laughs> no, I'll do that for, for class. No problem. But uh, this is what we do for our clients, and if you, uh, if you find this helpful, um, use it as, as you'd like. Uh, any questions on this? This again is related to the SEM of things. SEO, SEM. 
Uh, so you want to think about what sort of strategy you're going to have. And if you can't think of anything today or this week or this month, keep it, keep it in your pocket, keep it in the back of your mind. At some point, start filling it out, and that'll help you hone in on what you want to do. So if you'd like to print that, I'll turn the printer back on during the break. But the other document that I want you to look at that we'll get hands-on with in a moment uh, was also in that folder, and it's the one called Campos SEO2 Webmaster Tools. Question? What is your company website? My company? It's pmdinteractive.com. Is it the Wix? No. That one's, that one's fictional. That one is fictional. Yes, right here. PMDinteractive.com. All right, so the document, the other document is two pages long. You can print it during the break. Um, go ahead and open that up. And now we're going to talk about, this is the part that usually takes us a little while because depending on how you've got your website set up, it may be pretty easy to follow these steps or not. But uh, I'm going to work backwards actually here. Um, I've got here, uh, what are the best guidelines? Nowadays it's harder to be found by potential clients. There's just so much competition. The best advice to rank, however, comes straight from the search engines themselves. So um, the search engine, and we'll see the links, they actually offer you, you should do this, you should do this, you should not do this. So we have less guesswork. There's still a lot of guesswork because the search engine uh, companies will not give away all of their secrets. But um, let's work backwards. If we go to the very end, Page two, go to the section that says conversion goals. Uh, that's a fancy word that we often hear in the world of uh, SEO, conversion goals. You must decide the goals of your company early on. In my fictional business, this one is Victor's Bakery, I want people to buy my cupcakes. That's a conversion goal. I want to convert people from non-buyers of cupcakes to buyers of cupcakes. I want to convert them conversion goal. That's a conversion goal. In order to get to that goal, I have many conversion goals before that. So you might have one final end result, but you're probably going to have many smaller end results between point A and point Z. For example, get followers on Twitter. Well, if I get followers on Twitter, I might have more of an audience, so that when I tweet about sale this Sunday, more potential people could come to the store. Get social interactions, likes, shares, comments on Facebook. Okay, let's say I've got a few likes on Facebook. People are paying attention to my page. I'm not just going to create a Facebook and, le and leave it and let it lie fallow. I'm going to put Facebook content on a regular basis because I want people to like it, to comment on it, or to share it. What's the point of a like? Well, the more interaction you have and are on people's minds, the more you're marketing to them, the more they could potentially then actually do something, like when you post a, a picture on Facebook that says, use this coupon for 10% off uh, when you make your first purchase. Get site visits via Google+. So another social network, I'm going to have my website linked to Google+, and people could come to my website through my Google+, profile. Especially if I'm targeting that demographic that I said, Google Plus seems to skew toward men who like technology. If my company is about tech reviews, maybe I want to post on Google Plus, and then those links will take me back to my home page. Through social media and such, I want to get more hits on my web page. I want people to come to my website. I want to set up my webmaster tools that tell me that last month I had 20 hits, and now this month I have 200 hits. Get more shares on my blog posts from my site. I believe I mentioned it last time that blogging is an important strategy for SEO. Creating content on a regular basis. 
right? That content leads to authority, which could um, negate perhaps your not so positive longevity. So creating content on a regular basis with a blog. I want to get people paying attention and reading my blog. Get subscribers to my coupon newsletter. Well, if someone took the time to click that subscribe button and they keep getting my updates, perhaps they care enough so that when I post something about a, a sale or a coupon or an event, someone um, follows through. Uh, they've subscribed and they're the first ones to know about something. Early adopters. Get virtual clients, followers, to come to my physical location. So if you've got an actual storefront and you've got a hundred Twitter followers or a thousand or a hundred thousand, that's nice, but it doesn't do you much good if a lot of them are in Poland and if you're here in San Diego. So we want to get the ones that are in, in local areas to actually come to the location if that's what my goal is to finally get clients to buy my cupcakes. So if I want to get my website to, to sell a product, there's a lot of things I have to do in between to get them to buy the product because it's pretty easy, but people are still lazy to click the like button. And then it's even harder to get them to the point to buy the buy button, to click the buy button. Although if you haven't heard, Twitter's going to make it easier. They're going to start embedding the capability to buy something directly from a tweet. So you like those, you like that new computer on that tweet? Click buy. And Amazon sends it to you. You should see that it's a long, involved process to get from point A, a potential client follows you on Twitter, to point Z, the follower visits the store and buys a product. This is why search engine optimization goes hand in hand with search engine marketing. It's not enough what we're going to do on your website. You also need to have a presence outside of it. You have to include marketing to it. SEO, SEM. Any questions on this section? Um, your website should say that it's in San Diego if you want people that are going all across the country going on and wondering where you're at. No, it does. If you go over to the contact page, there's a map and everything. <clears throat> so if your website, and that's a good point for people, that if your website is related to a, lo a location, it's a good idea to have location information on your website. NAP, NAP, name, address, phone. You have to have a name, address, and phone number somewhere on your website if you're a local place. So remember that, NAP, NAP, name, address, phone number. Question? Is there a certain amount of words you could have on the blog? It depends, uh, but I would say at the minimum go with a hundred words, but I would recommend a little bit more to 300 words. So anything between 100 and 300 is good. More than that depends on, on what you're trying to accomplish in your blog. Some content you can write a, a thousand words and that's fine. Uh, but I would say less than a hundred and it's it might not be as effective. So I would recommend 300. And in my blogging class, I talk about, let's say you release a blog post once a month. That's a good goal, at least once a month. What you could do is spend a weekend, you know, lock yourself in the office, and, and write enough blog posts for three months, uh, five months. Get it done in one day, and a platform like WordPress, and most of them will allow you to schedule a post. So maybe you wrote a thousand words, but maybe you want to parse that out or spread that out in three posts, part one, part two, part three, to get people to come back. So you write that 1,000 word blog post, but then this month you publish part one, and then you set to publish part two next month, and then part three next month. You know, 300 words, 300 words, 300 words. Alright, so if we go back to page one, we're going to talk about Google Webmaster Tools and Bing Webmaster Tools. Both of these are free tools that we use 
to track a variety of data. Uh, hits to our site, time of day, um, browser version, location, m amount of time spent on our site, our most popular pages, etc. And with all of that data, we can then make decisions about if our marketing strategy is working or if we need to implement a marketing strategy. So both of these give you the same result in that the webmaster tool will be connected with your website so that it can track data. But their screens are different. One is from Google, one is from Microsoft. Different companies are going to do things slightly different, but the concepts will be the same. We're going to do one, and then we're going to see how pretty much the same thing for the other. We're going to do uh, the Bing Webmaster Tools first. Uh, we'll, we'll do that section, and then we'll go back to Google, and we'll see once we do one, the other will make a lot of sense, and we'll be able to do it. But um, here what I've got, if you look at the Bing Webmaster Tools section, if you click on that link, allow it to open up. you should get a, a screen that is the Bing Webmaster Tools Help and How to Center. Provides you assistance with your Webmaster Tools as well as guidelines. So this is the this is the place to go. This is like the manual to Bing. And then I've got a link for like the manual to Google. How do you set yourself up? Um, how do you set your, your website up properly so that the search engines uh, are aware of your site and rank your site well when someone searches? There's here, for example, a getting started checklist. Step one, two, three, etc. We're going to basically do this first one together. Um, this whole page here very important. Uh, then it, there's just lots of links here. We're not going to be able to cover every screen, but I'm giving you this link so that you can, you know, uh, uh, read it uh, by a cozy fireplace and curl up with it and read. This is all. This is all of the stuff I need to know. Uh, so. There's a frequently asked questions, etc., etc. It's all here. So on your own, you're going to look at this. But what we're going to do is actually set this up. So if you go back to our document over here, uh, there's the guidelines. Bing, a rival search engine and one that is rising, has its own advice to help webmasters rank well on their results page. You'll find that many of these same concepts apply to both search engines with minor variations. And my points here tell you some variations. But we need to connect the site. We need to verify the site. Because think about this. Uh, we're going to connect Bing and Google to your website to get data, traffic data. Uh, do you think someone ever thought about, can I do this with my competitor? Can I see what my competitor's traffic is and maybe figure out how to steal their traffic? So that was a concern. So we've, we're going to need to verify the site. Uh, we're going to need to verify, because I can create this account and put in my competitor's address, but it won't. that's only half the puzzle. The other half is then I need to connect my account with my website in the way that we're going to look at. Because it's like saying, asking someone, uh, where do you live? They say, I live on that mansion right there on the hill. You know, they can say that, but they can't prove it until they unlock the door and walk in. That's what we're going to need to do. We're going to need to open up our website, put in one line of code, and that will verify that we have control of the site so that we don't abuse this with our competitors. Question. Is that already set up? Most likely. Most likely at a certain point here, when we get to something, you'll see it's already done for you for yourself. So then you can just uh, check out some of the other things I have here. But if you've already got it verified, then you're you're, you're a little ahead. Good. Yeah. We're going to look at something called site maps, which are very important. Um, if you go to a brand new mall, for example, and you want to find a particular store, uh, how many of you are going to wander around until you find it? How many of you are going to perhaps go to that kiosk that has the whole map of the mall there? So probably more of you. 
that's what we need for our websites too. We need to have a comprehensive map of our, of our site so that the search engines know everything that's on our site and that when someone searches for um, catering, uh, Mexican food catering in San Diego, uh, Google knows that my site is about catering in San Diego of Mexican food. So we'll set up site maps, we'll link additional sites, etc. So we'll do this stuff right now. Uh, there's a link on our document here, bing.com slash toolbox. Let's go ahead and go to that address. All of these tools are free, but what we'll need to do first is most likely create an account. How many of you currently have a Hotmail email address account? Or an Outlook email address? Um, MSN2? MSN2, yeah. Any Microsoft account. Anyone have any Microsoft account? Okay, if you already do, you're one step ahead because we'll just activate these tools in a moment. If you have Google, Gmail, you'll need to create a new account for, for, for Bing. Uh, you can use your existing Gmail if you want, but I would recommend use your Gmail for your Google Analytics when we get to that, and we will use our Hotmail for our Bing tools. It's up to you to decide, but go ahead and go to that address, bing.com slash toolbox. If you already have an account, a Microsoft account, just sign in. I'll catch up with you in a moment. For everyone else, for most of us, we're going to create a new account. I'll show you how that looks like. My screen will probably look a little bit different than yours because I've already set this up, but I'll show you as best as I can what you should expect. So bing.com slash toolbox. Notice right below the sign in, there's a sign up. Sign up now and we will give you $50 US uh, credit for search advertising on the Yahoo Bing network. Remember as I said on the first day, there's two ways to get good SEO, the easy way, the hard way. The easy way is to pay for it. The hard way is what we're doing the longer term way. But here, just for signing up on Bing, they'll give you $50 to start advertising on Bing, which could help you as a boost, especially when you've got a new website. Yes? Um, give it a try. Click, Go to sign in and try your Yahoo account and see if it works. If not, then we'll have to do the sign up, and then you could still use your address. So as that mentioned there, the Yahoo Bing network. Yahoo was one of the earliest search engines, pretty famous. Then Google got in on the scene, started to eat everyone's lunch, and then eventually Yahoo made a partnership with Bing, and now they have about 17 to 19% market share. So whatever comes from Bing also goes to Yahoo. So what we're optimizing in Bing also optimizes to Yahoo. Question? Um, creating, creating a new account with this incorporated in the that I work here, mm -hmm. would you, what would you recommend for doing the Nevada one or for my That's a good question. Um, I don't think it matters, but let me ask you, where are you expecting to get your clientele from? Uh, we're fully on the internet base. Okay, then it probably doesn't matter, so whatever, whatever works for you. So I'm going to select Sign Up. I went to the Sign Up screen, and there's a button here, Don't have an account? Sign Up now. So here it says uh, Sign Up for an account, and you can choose a name here. All right, everyone, attention, please. Attention, please. Uh, so here you can either uh, put in your existing uh, email address if you want. It says use your favorite email or create a new one, which will be either Outlook or Hotmail. Uh, and as I said, you could, uh, you could create a brand new one just for your company and keep these things separate. 
uh, or use an existing one. If you've already got Yahoo or Hotmail, um, use that. So take a moment, if you're new to this, new to the Microsoft um, account here, create this account. There's a part here about help us protect your info, which is, which is optional. You can put in a phone number if you want, uh, but let me tell you a reason why you might want to. This is going to collect a lot of information for you, a lot of data of your website and all of that. And if you lose access to it, if you forget your password, if someone hacks the account, you might lose a lot of valuable data. So if you put in a phone number or an alternate email address, this is another way to get back into your account. I've had these things for, set up for years. I've never gotten an unsolicited phone call from Bing trying to sell me keywords or whatever. I, I have not had that problem. I have my phone number plugged into it, but it's, it's the security reasons that I do it, that if my account is hacked, they can send a text message to your phone to help get you back into your account. Because someone might have broken into your account, but they probably don't have your phone. So this is another factor for security. It's optional, but you can put in a phone number or an alternate email. Birthday, if you don't, if you don't want to put a real birthday, just put January 1st, uh, January 1st, 1980, and gender, what you'd like, zip code, etc. Perhaps if you want, this is the only thing that maybe you might want to turn off. Send me promotional offers from Microsoft. You can subscribe, unsubscribe at any time. I don't really feel that I get uh, that many uh, obtrusive ones, but if you don't want to get emails about offers, about um, you know, new documentation or offers about um, search and all of that, you can turn it off. If you create a new account here, it'll be sent to that account anyway. Go ahead and create the account. And like I said, mine will look a little different from yours, so I'll let you create the account and sign in, and then I'll see what you guys add, and then I will go forward. What was the address we typed in the toolbox? Did everyone uh, print their name on the sign in sheet
about to show you the next steps. All right, so I'm showing you uh, uh, I'm showing you my account here. Uh, this is how it's going to be. This is how it's going to look when it's when it's set up. Yours says it's empty and it says add a site. We'll do that in a moment. But you're going to see then the list of your websites and a bunch of data and then more data um, as we as we get into it. But you have these different columns that I'll explain once we've got it all set up, but this will tell us a variety of bits of data plus more. And if we're setting this up for the first time, we're really going to get anything useful. We're not going to get anything useful really until next week because this only keeps track of data from the moment you set it up. It's not going to go back a month ago to tell you what happened a month ago with your hits. That's why we want to set up as soon as possible. But we're going to see, for example, clicks from search and appeared in search. This is a measure about if someone is searching for something, and it'll tell us what that something is, we appeared in search. And compared to last time period, in my case 30 days, this site appeared 48% less, 48 times less, 48% times less than last month. Well, how many? 48? That's terrible. That's half. Well, what number is it? The next screen will tell me. This is just an overview. So this is just saying that this site in the last month appeared less times on search. The other measure is uh, clicks from search. Okay, I get a page full of results. My page is there, but nothing matters a little. Nothing matters more than someone actually clicking on it to go to my page. This tells you within the last 30 days there was a hundred percent less clicks. That sounds terrible. Well, in the next screen, it'll tell me what value is that. Maybe it was that it was a drop of one click. One click would be a hundred percent. We'll see that in just being yes. Let's see some other values elsewhere here. Less alarming, perhaps. This one says seven percent less appearing in search from the thirty days, but twenty percent more clicks. Okay, it showed up less times on search, but more people clicked it. 20%. Well, 20% might be two more clicks. Again, on the next screen, it tells you exactly what those numbers are. The last two columns are pages crawled and pages indexed. This relates to your sitemap. This relates to your master file of everything that's on my website. So if my site changes on a regular basis, the search engines will crawl your website more. They'll go to every page on your website so that then they could uh, categorize it. So 
the search engines are going to crawl your website to try to find something new. And if it finds something new, it's going to add it to the index. It's going to, Bing is going to add it to their list of all of the websites that it knows so that when someone searches something specific, it could possibly show your site. Question. Can Bing crawl even though you didn't submit a site map? It can. It, but it, it can crawl it, but it'll be much more efficient and effective if we do submit a sitemap. It's like wandering around in the mall, eventually you'll find the store, make it easier, and give a map. In this case, zero crawled, zero indexed, meaning no more new sites have more no more new pages have been added to that site. Therefore, Bing didn't add any more pages to the index. It didn't find any new ones. What about crawl errors? Crawl errors, um, we'll have to look for your sp at your specific result, but it means that it was trying to find a page that it didn't find, and there's some sort of error. So maybe the page was renamed or deleted or, or um, removed. So if you periodically add a page, does that help in some way? It so does. Yeah, but th and this is what I'm saying about um, relevant content on a regular basis. So I, I wouldn't, let's say my bakery, I'm not going to invent a new cake uh, every month and add a new cake page to my site. But I can do a new blog post every month. So that's the new content that I would add on a regular basis. It's not that I have to update my products or my design or add a page just for the sake of adding a page. I'm adding pages to the blog, for example. And that's what will help increase my crawl rate and even better, my index rate. What is the index? The index is a list of all of the pages that Google and Bing know about your site. So it, it's just a record, you know, it's a little record that shows these are the 20 pages on their site. This is the index. When it finds another page, it adds it to the index. So is the column index, is there a correlation between those two or no? Mm -hmm. Because I saw one thing where you have a crawl where you don't have a... Yeah, and sometimes these numbers, I don't know why sometimes there's a positive number on one and a zero on another, and sometimes positive and negative. Sometimes they feel like they should correlate exactly. But I, I see here that, okay, there's a positive increase here, but nothing was indexed. Again, this is part of the algorithm of, um, of the search engines about what exactly do they do behind the scenes. And when I look at this screen, I care a little bit more about clicks from search. Actually, I care most about clicks from search. The others are good info, but clicks from search is the most important. Now also, let's say I've got negative numbers, all four negative numbers when I log in. I'm not too worried unless I change this over to a longer interval, and then over a longer interval, negative numbers. If I have negative numbers over a longer interval, then I'm worried because I've got a longer trend of negativity. So let's say right here, in these three months, this client um, has has been getting more clicks in the past three months. I care a little bit more about that than just one month. There might be a bad month. People didn't go out to buy that month. But if I'm seeing increases in the longer term, that's better. Decreases, then I have to start to think about, well, what's going on? In this one, you know, this is the crawl rate. It hasn't really... A lot of new content has not been added to that page, honestly, but it has been very active in social media. So we're getting more clicks from other sources. Okay, so this is what this screen looks like when you've got it set up. But everyone, most of you are probably staring at a screen that says, add a site, right? So let's look at the process of adding a site. Let me go ahead and click on add a site. Mine's different because I've already got it set up, but you've got a button I think that says add a site. Yeah. Go ahead and click that and add your site's address. Question. Is there a benefit to using a non-GCN with the, uh, the, 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 the 
If your if your uh, domain provider has set things up properly, there should not be any difference. Technically, there is. www.yourwebsite is different than just your website. But if your provider set it up with a proper redirect, either one of those that you type should get you to the same result page, so the search engine should go to the right place. Most providers have set that up properly nowadays. Oh, but I, I don't mean searching the service. I mean, when you're investigating a site, would it be more likely, like, when they go out from Google and Bingo's out to search for the place? As far as the goes, is there, is there a benefit to using all the I don't believe so. I've never really run into that issue in any of the documentation from third-party sources and such, because uh, it's about the content. Once the once the the search engines find your site, and right here we're basically walking up to the search engine saying, "Here's my site." So instead of it maybe stumbling upon your site at some point, right here we're saying, "Here's our site." So it is going straight to the horse's mouth. Let me see if I can set this up. I need to set this up without a setup. Okay, so perhaps then you might see a screen like this. If you don't, don't worry, uh, you'll see something similar. But uh, I've added my website. And then it asks for a sitemap. Again, we don't have a sitemap set up yet. Uh, this little dot here tells you if you already have created and published a sitemap for your site, you can add it here. Mm -hmm. Note that you can always add a sitemap later. So the sitemap, well, most of us will probably do it a little bit later because sitemaps can be set up either very easily with a plugin or very difficult, very difficultly with a uh, doing it manually. So that again, this is what this is what, how uh, WordPress really helps you. Let's say I don't have a sitemap for the moment, so I will leave that alone. When do you receive the most traffic to your site for your local time of the day? Uh, to help Bing optimize its crawl behavior for your site, you can tell us when your site receives the most traffic. We will generally try to crawl your pages less during the times that you have more visitors. You can always change this later. So I don't know. I don't know when people come to my site most often. That's why I'm setting this up. So I'll set this all day. But if I know that I get more traffic from 9 to 5, I don't want Google or Bing eating up my bandwidth at that time when people are trying to buy my product. So I'll tell them, I'm busiest at this time. You guys check me out at midnight. If you don't know that, just it's fine to leave all day, the default. I'm going to select to add. All right, does everyone see this screen here? Verify ownership. Anyone need a little help? Yeah, some of you are getting a slightly more detailed screen that asks you for industry and the content preferences and such. Mm -hmm. Fill it out as best as possible. It's pretty straightforward. The defaults should work. And then you'll get to the screen like me in a moment and we'll go more.
So it looks like everyone's up to this point. So I'm going to say a couple more things here, then we'll take our break. It's been a little while. 
But this screen here, this is the this is the part that we've got three options to do. This is why I asked you uh, to bring your login. So we need to do one of these three. I'm going to say probably do not do number three. It's the most complicated one. Just ignore that one for the moment. Number one and number two are some of our better options. And depending on how your site is, um, is set up, you'll see which of these is easier. For example, I will often recommend uh, number two, depending on what type of login access you have to your site. I'm going to show, after the break, how I would do number two, uh, which is I'm going to log in to my website, and I'm going to copy this line of code and paste it in a specific place in my code. Again, I'll show it in, 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 in the projector. And then once I've done that step, or that option number two, and click verify, then my Bing uh, Webmaster Tools is connected with my website, and it'll start to track data. The other way to do it, if I don't have access to edit the, the code of the site, if you have something called FTP access, we can download this file and then upload it to the server and then click verify and then it'll be verified. Again, it's like giving the proof that, yeah, I live up on that mansion, let me show you. I'm going to open the door and walk in and put something on the kitchen table. That's what we're doing here. We're saying, I do own that website, I'm going to put something on the website to prove it. And for all of us, or many of us, it'll be a little bit different. So what we're going to do then is, um, we're going to take a break, uh, 15 minutes, um, <coughs> and uh, when we, no, just 10 minutes, when we come back, then I'll show you how I would do this, and then we'll take some time to actually do it on your site if you're able to. So it's 1.55. Uh, we'll be back at uh, 2.05.